We're now ready for the final session in determining is a chemical equation balanced. So we're going to move on to one of the big equations that we see here. We remember from the earlier sessions that these are called the reactants. They're what exist before the reaction and these are the products. The law of conservation of mass says that whatever atoms exist in the reactants must equal the same number and type of atoms that exist in the products. So the first thing we're going to do when we determine if a uh, chemical equation is balanced is we're going to draw a line separating, separating the reactants and the products. And we're going to start off with the first molecule. Now that first molecule exists right up until the plus sign. The plus sign means that we're going to start over, that we're not going to worry. This is a separate molecule from this molecule here. CaOH2 is separate from H3PO4. So I always like to start just from the left-hand side and work our way over. So we'll start with Ca, with calcium. Okay, so we're going to ask the same questions for every single element that we come across. First, is there a subscript? If there isn't, we know it's an invisible one. Is this inside parentheses? No, it is not, so we don't have to worry about parentheses. Is there a coefficient? Yes, there is. There's a 3. So 1 times 3. That gives us 3. Now we are inside parentheses, so the next element is an O. Same process. Is there a subscript? No, so we know it's an invisible 1. Is it inside parentheses? Yes, which means we must deal with the number outside the parentheses, a 2. So 1 times 2. Is there a coefficient? Yes, there is. There's a 3. We must also consider that. 1 times 2 times 3 gives us 6. Okay, now we move on to the hydrogen. Hydrogen. Is there a subscript? It's an invisible one. Is it inside parentheses? Yes, it is. One times two. Is there a coefficient in the front? Yes, there's a three. Times three equals six. Now we move on to a new molecule. We no longer have to worry about the coefficient in front of this molecule because we've reached a plus sign. That cancels things out. So we're going to begin not worrying about this. This is done. We've finished that completely and we just start here. We're going to start with this H. Now we already had hydrogen 1. So it doesn't matter. We're just going to keep adding these. If you had two Skittles in your left hand and three Skittles in your right hand, and I said, how many Skittles do you have? You would say, I have five Skittles. You wouldn't say, I have two left-hand Skittles and three right-hand Skittles. You would add them together. Same thing here. So we have hydrogen. Is there a subscript? Yes, there's a three. Is it inside parentheses? No, we don't have to worry about that. Is there a coefficient? Yes, there is. So three times two equals six additional hydrogen. Phosphorus, P, we haven't come across that yet. It's a new element. Phosphorus, is there a subscript? No, so it's an invisible one. Is it inside parentheses? No, it is not. We don't have to worry about that. Is there a coefficient? Yes, one times two. There are two phosphorus. And finally, we get to oxygen. Okay, we already had oxygen once up here, just like hydrogen, we're simply going to add it to it. How many oxygen atoms are there? There are four. Are there parentheses? No, there are not. We don't have to worry about that. Is there a, sub or is there a coefficient? Four times two equals eight. So we can add these together. There are 14 oxygen and there are 12 hydrogen. So in total, we have three calcium, 14 oxygen, 12 hydrogen, and 2 phosphorus in the reactants. Now we move on to the product side, and we do the exact same thing on the product side. I always like to rewrite my elements in the exact same order as they are over here. It makes it easier to compare them when we're done with this uh, balancing on this side, counting the atoms on this side. Same process. We start with calcium. Is there a subscript? Yes, there's a 3. Is there any parentheses? No, there are not. Is there a coefficient? No, there are not. That makes it quite easy. There's simply three. The phosphorus. Is there a subscript? No, so there's an invisible one. Is it inside parentheses? Yes. So one times two. Is there a coefficient? 
There is not. We don't have to worry about that. So 1 times 2 gives us 2. Oxygen. Is there a subscript? Yes. 4. Is it inside parentheses? Yes. So we have to deal with that too. 4 times 2 gives us 8. Is there a coefficient? There is not. So 4 times 2 gives us 8. Okay, We're done with this molecule. So this molecule is completely finished. We don't have to worry about anything else associated with this molecule. We move on to this one right here. The hydrogen. Is there a subscript? Yes, there's a 2. Are there any parentheses? No, there are not. We don't have to worry about that. Is there a coefficient? Yes, there is. There's a 6. Okay, so we have to multiply those together, and we get 12. And then finally, oxygen. Is there a subscript? No, so there's an invisible 1. Is there any parentheses? No, there are not. We don't have to worry about that. Is there a coefficient? Yes, there's a 6. So again, we're going to add it to this oxygen. So 1 times 6 equals 6. We add these together, and we get 14. Okay, so now we want to check and see, is this equation balanced? Well, let's look on both sides. We started with 3 calcium. We ended with 3 calcium. We started with 14 oxygen. We ended with 14 oxygen. We started with 12 hydrogen. We ended with 12 hydrogen. We started with 2 phosphorus. We ended with 2 phosphorus. Since all of the atoms that we started with are equal in both the quantity, the number of atoms, and of the same type, then we know that this is a balanced equation. Okay, so we would consider this a balanced equation.